Good morning guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Captain Cody Davis here with you guys again as always. And uh, we're going fishing. Going fishing this morning. Got an awesome morning so far. Uh, you know, light wind, overcast skies. A little bit cool this morning and uh, I was the only truck at the boat ramp, which is always a plus. And uh, I don't know, we're going fishing. Uh, here's the deal, we had a huge rain event last night. I mean, it, it rained consistently and constantly from, I'd say 3.30 until like midnight last night, all the way from the north end of the lake, all the way down to the Florida Keys. So everything's very saturated. We didn't have a lot of wind or anything, it didn't seem, that I saw, but uh, just steady rain. So it probably cooled this water off. It might've changed some things out here on the lake, but at the end of the day, I haven't been out here in like two weeks. I kind of lied. I was out two days ago uh, on a guide trip for the first time in two weeks. And fortunately, every spot we stopped at, my customers caught fish and we caught some good fish. So that was pretty promising. I've been kind of taking some time off from fishing out here uh, just because we're getting ready to get into our busy season here, getting into the fall. People are going to start coming down, vacationing. And uh, so I'm going to be running trips like crazy, hopefully hopefully fingers crossed and uh, this is also just one of the tougher times or the toughest time for me personally to fish the lake end of summer going into fall you know by the book but like I tell you guys all the time we don't really have fall and we don't have spring it kind of just goes from winter to summer and uh, it happens very quickly down here <clears throat> and our fish you know they're, they're in that transition mode right now they could kind of feel the, those winds starting to switch. A little tarpon just rolled in front of the boat. They, could, they, they know the water's coming up, and they know what's going on, and these fish are in transition. And uh, it it's, could be difficult to catch them. So I just said, you know what? I'm off today. And uh, a little guy woke up early and had me up. <clears throat> he went back to sleep. Breezy went back to sleep. I said, I'm going to go fishing. I had the camera charged. I'm only running on one camera today, guys, because of course there's a plane flying over while I'm trying to do this. I'm running on one camera because I'm down four GoPros. The Florida heat this summer filming those videos, just it toasted them. They are done. And uh, I gotta put some money aside to get some new cameras. So bear with me. I wanna start filming a lot more, but it's, I've got like one and a half cameras going. So any of you that, uh, have a hookup at GoPro or DJI or anything, send them my way because I definitely need some cameras. But uh, I'm gonna stop yapping. We're gonna get out there. I think I got a little shad spawn deal and uh, we're gonna go try and just catch some fish today. Have fun. So see you guys when we get out there. got to this first spot this first area I should say it's not really a spot it's more of an area we're gonna try and cover water looks good it's dirty but it's definitely fishable uh, that's what's always good about having a white swim jig tied on give you a quick idea of how the water looks um, we're gonna see if there's any shad spawn deal still going on here we're getting kind of late in the year I think this whole early morning shad deal is gonna start going away but uh, we'll see if there's any remnants of one here I don't know try frogging flipping with this overcast skies like this it kind of opens the door to a few different presentations we can try but we're just going to uh fire a white swim jig around and see if there's any if we see any signs of any shad the other day i was here there was definitely some just got a half ounce dirty jigs no jack swim jig only swim jig i throw i have no idea what color this is it's like maybe tennessee shad or something anything white silver translucent will work and we got the little gambler little easy on the back in like white lightning or something i've got a bag of all different shad colors of that too so control motor in the water we'll start hucking and winding
fish is like cool to the touch. Like that rain really cooled this water off, it feels like. But kind of a funny thing there. Good one. Not a giant by any means, but just a good healthy fish. I've casted down that stretch 40 times and haven't had a bite. And that was the first cast where I threw it and really brought that bait quick, bringing it across the top and that fish ate it. So we'll see, maybe that's the key. Maybe they want it burning real quick this morning, getting a reaction bite. There's all kinds of shads and stuff getting blown up on in here. So I'm gonna get back to casting. Switched over to black and blue just to give them something different to look at. Not a bite. I was about to say, but again, I am not sponsored, affiliated, anything with Strike King. But that hack attack hook, that thing's the deal, man. I mean, that fish had me so wrapped up in the reeds. And I messed up. I shouldn't have caught that fish because I just got pissed off and slacked him off and I felt him kicking he was still on there that's why when you swing you just hold tight until you know they're gone but God, that fish smells terrible which is a good thing that's a lake fish you can see just how white belly he or she is I fit 
three of these clumps. I mean, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. And I've had a bite on all of them. I missed the first two and then that one. I thought if I wouldn't have caught that fish, I would have said it was a big one because it felt heavy. But it's tough out here. I, the weather, the conditions are awesome. And where I was, where I started this morning throwing the swim jig, is a really kind of unique spot in the lake. And I really haven't caught them there in really years. But I decided just to try it and the other day and there were some fish there and there's there's a there is some fish where I was. But there's a lot of junk fish and, and I just wasn't getting a lot of bites. I missed one or two when I picked up the flipping rod. But I don't know. This water out here, like I said, I'm out, you know, in the middle of nothing. There's like nothing out here. This water is straight yoohoo. But I'm getting some bites. So I'm just gonna I, I hate that all you guys watch me do is flip on this channel, but you got to go with what you're confident in, right? That's the only way I've been able to get bites. And that's going to slowly start to change here in the next month or so with the way that the lake's going to set up. There's going to be a lot more casting, moving baits, chatter baits, spooks, worm, things like that. But if you don't like watching flipping, then go shake a minnow. See if we can catch another one. That one ain't a missile baits D-bomb. Again, not affiliated with them at all, but I do like this bait a lot. Here's the deal, guys, with this hook. There's a lot of great flipping hooks on the market. And again, I know I'm just making it commercial for Strike King, but this is just something to think about. It's a thick, super thick gauge hook. But in that case right there where that fish, what he did was when I set the hook, he did a lap or two around one of those reeds like this. And now all he's pulling against is the reed. All right, I'm pulling against the reed, not doing anything to the fish. He's pulling against the reed as well, which with only eight inches of, of, of slack line and those reeds, there is no give. He doesn't have the bend of my rod or anything. He just has the base of that reed that's not moving. And him down there thrashing will tear their mouth. It'll rip a hole in their mouth. With that, with a thinner hook, it's kind of more act, more like a razor. That, that's kind of exaggerated, but you know what I'm saying? It's going to come through their mouth, their lip, their skin a lot easier. With that thicker gauge, it just grabs more meat, I guess, and it's not going to tear as easy. So that's why I like that hook. A lot of people say, you don't need that gaff of a hook. You don't. But in a scenario like that, that fish probably would have came off with a smaller gauge hook. So. That's a 5 aught hack attack. They make a 4, they make a 6. The 6 is huge. The 4 is good for like flipping mats and some smaller baits. But this 5 aught is pretty much all I use. And uh, it fits any beaver style, cross style bait perfect. But... Alright, see if we can't catch another one. I know I already just said that, but let's try it again. Again, where I'm at out here is just kind of a barren wasteland. Um, but you got a couple of things. You got really good bottom, and there's just a bunch of bait kind of meandering around out here. Uh, predominantly shad. So I was flipping a jig, but I haven't been able to get bit on a jig very much over the last couple months, so I just went to this beaver style bait. And that smaller profile is going to imitate both a brim and it imitates a shad real well. These fish, I think, are keyed in on a little bit smaller bait. This water is, again, filthy. So, as opposed to where you guys usually see me just dropping the bait, reeling it in, dropping the bait, reeling it in, I'm more fishing it. I'm letting it hit the bottom, kind of sit there a little bit, giving it a small drag, giving those fish a chance to be able to find it. And I think that's, uh, that's been, you know, that's going to be key out here when you're fishing this dirty water for sure. big
Well, he was there. I messed it up. I, mean, I don't know if you guys caught what I did there. What I say about fishing the bait, is I flipped it in there three or four times, never got a bite. And then I almost just swam the bait out, just reeling it slow and giving that chance more of a time to get it. I feel like in this dirty water, they could feel that something's in there, but their line of sight isn't as great. So give them that chance to find it. He wasn't big. I think he was like two pounds. I saw him come up and see the white of his mouth get it. But that little thing, just taking your time sometimes and take, you know, reeling the bait out as opposed to ripping it out to make your next flip. You know, that could have just as easily have been a nine, 10 pounder or, you know, or a five pounder in a tough day tournament situation. So little things to pay attention to. That one shook the reeds. He came and got it. This is fun. Old beat up fish. Come on. I made sure he got it. I thought he came off too. But There is the first bass I have ever caught flipping pads on this lake, aside from like when they're spawning. Hey, that's why it took me so long to set the hook. I ran the fish over. I lifted, it felt funny. Look how clean that fish is. I lifted and it felt funny. And uh, I just couldn't, be couldn't believe it was a fish, but I flipped over here. And by the time I set the hook, he was under the boat. Again, all you keyboard warriors, you don't need to set the hook that hard. You don't need to pull that hard. Again, that was a small fish. Okay, it was a small fish. But 7-8 flipping stick, Senko Sticks reed beater, flipped back here. Fish was here, you know, 7-8 feet to me. Setting the hook. I don't know if you guys can see it up here, but there are, I don't know. 11 or 12 big spattered off pads, whatever these things are, that I cut through that break just like a weed whacker. Cut right through on the hook set, went through them, and then put, put that hook into that fish. That's kind of stuff that happens. So having a little bit longer rod, having, you know, and fishing the heavier line and being, you know, efficient with your hook set. Reel down. Make sure you, your rod is loaded and you're tight before you set the hook because again a lot of times you're going to think you are tight to the fish but in fact you're actually tight to the grass you ran through and then when you set the hook is when you're going to notice it cut and get to the fish so now i might have to start flipping some pads crazy I think that's gonna do it for me um, it just flat out died the bite just shut off um, it's kind of crazy considering I was catching them flipping I thought the bite might get better I thought they might 
suck into these reeds and whatnot, but and I believe they have. I believe they are. They're just not biting. Even all the activity around me, like the needlefish and the shad and everything, have just completely gone silent. So I've heard some like rumors and people getting that midday bite, like that noon to two o'clock, which I'm sure is probably happening, but I've got some things I gotta go pick up and some errands to run. I just wanted to come out and fish for a little bit. So I'm gonna head in and it is hot. I mean, it, uh, man, it was beautiful this morning with all that cloud cover, but it is humid, hot. And on top of that, I think I've got some really bad thunderstorms inbound. A couple of my buddies are on the beach fishing the mullet run and they're sitting in their trucks right now because they said it is nasty and it's coming this way. So probably best, you know, case that I just head in for the day, but it was fun. Definitely caught some fish. Um, I'm not sure how many I caught, but that's we're still in that summer pattern kind of deal where you know from what i can tell it's like you get out here early you can get on a pretty good bite until we start getting those little cool fronts you know th those first couple cold fronts are going to be crucial but but tough at the same time that's really going to kick those fish into doing some different things so it might be a little tough um you know once after one or two of them but after by usually by like the third front these fish get acclimated and uh, they start just, you just start following them back or following them around wherever they decide to move to. But I think I caught them on a swim jig, with just a swim jig and flipping. Uh, tried throwing a chatterbait at, in, a, in a trap and some little cuts and things, but I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I got real consistent there. Like it was every little clump you thought you were gonna get bit in flipping, you did get bit in. I did lose a ton of fish because I'm rusty. And I believe that they're still in there. I, I believe I didn't even scratch the surface of catching them, but they just completely turned off. So I should sit here and really try to work and catch a few, but I'm gonna go to the AC instead. But either way, if you guys got any questions, let me know. Uh, if you guys wanna book a trip, be sure to let me know. And once we start getting some cooler weather, I'm gonna start trying to venture out, fish a couple lakes that are within you know day trip distance of here. So leave any comments that you guys on any lakes you guys would like to see me fish um yeah and i might be uh planning that in to go try and do that so that's about it i'm gonna head to the house again uh senko sticks if you guys want to check out these rods book a trip with me obviously i'll have them in the boat let me know can't say enough good things about them just super comfortable lightweight ultra sensitive everything you want in a fishing rod right and if you use uh code tight splice at checkout you do save 10 percent they were nice enough to do that so speaking to them i'm going to put my rod sleeves on i'm going for a boat ride get some ac going so i'll see you guys on the next one